Podcast Director, the award-winning short film, um, 24-7 Fitness Club, 7 Nighttime Frog, The Incredible World War II Story, The Story Keeper, which is shortlisted for the Hot Springs Documentary Award, and the documentary of the uh, yeah. Chef's Puppet Master. Um, he's also won an award yesterday for his amazing film, uh, based in Spain. Um, he will be speaking on stories that connect us all. So I'll just <coughs> Thank you. I'm not blocking yet. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm standing here, it's okay now. Yeah. I first want to thank the festival for the amazing experience and all the people that I've met the last days. Um, yeah, it's really been a really nice experience. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you something about that, how stories uh, connect us, uh, and I do that also together with my short movie that has kind of the same subject, same theme. Um, uh, yeah, I, I will still click for when we can go to the other um, stories. Um, came from the oral tradition. Um, imagine the cavemen, the later Neanderthals. Uh, they would warn each other for dangers um, by telling stories, like uh, moral values, um, curing. A lot of stories have sort of cure. Like, don't do this because this can happen because and then they make the whole story with it. And later, after that, that oral tradition, they started painting it in the cave. Uh, where was food, the potential um, animals that they could hunt down? Where was danger? Don't go in here because food leads to an area that is maybe dangerous. Um, and like that, it came and later it involved books came, movie came eventually, all the way to even computer games now. Um, so yeah, we can go to the next plate, and that was one of the reasons that um, fascinated me. Like, how can how can stories connect all of us for so many years, and how come that we have stories about the same moral values but completely different told? Like European cinema, it is very different than the American way. Arabic stories are very different than the Western. Way. Like, if you talk about the jinn, Disney will have much more. Literally, they will have someone coming out of the of a bottle. But in Arabic, often a sandstorm could explain as a jinn as well, something that we cannot explain, something that is so wondrous and magically that 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 could be the jinn as well. And I found it very interesting that uh, our the Western world is more like, often literally like good and bad, but there's not so much in between. And if you look at other types of stories, there is like. We don't know. Like once there was, once this happened, and we don't know if the man was bad, or wrong, or for why he did it. But you know, so there was less. There was more room for imagination. I think. So this was something that um, <coughs> that I wanted to, to work with as a as a story. I was living in Malaga at the time. Can go to the next one. Um, and I was there with my friends in Malaga in Spain, and we wanted to make a story. Um, so there's this Arabic bathhouse in Malaga, in all, all of Spain, that comes from the, the Moorish times, um, kind of in Madrid and Barcelona, even more in Andalusia that used to be also uh, Moorish. So you have these beautiful bathhouses where you can go for a massage and you can go in a hot bath. It is a very interesting experience. So I, found, I fell in love with the atmosphere and so that if we can create something with this mood, this kind of feeling then I would be very happy to, to build a to story. But how do we get how do we get the story? So we got the idea, we got the mood, the team, um, and I was quite new in Malaga so I had to find everybody from scratch. Um, so I teamed up with a very nice writer, Salva Rubio, uh, he's from Barcelona. The next page will be um, and he said to me, okay, you want to do something about the 1001 nights, the Arabian stories. Like, the Arabian stories um, came from 1001 nights, Sherazade, the princess, um, um, the sultan was a very angry man because he saw that his wife was betraying him. And he, as a kind of revenge, because he was so injured inside and his heart was broken, he said, Okay, I'm going to marry every woman, I will sleep with, with them, and then I will kill them. And he did it for many, many, many years, until there was no woman left. Only the, the daughter of the vizier, of the advisor of the sultan, Sherazade. But Sherazade told the story to, um, to the sultan. 
and that story was so interesting for us that he said, I want another story, how does the story continue? So she made sure that every day she told the story for 1,000 and one times. And then the story was healed, because the story talked about the good, the, the bad, the values, um, and it was a curing, a curing way for, for the story. And then she came to the Ruby and So we wanted to do something with 1,001 Night and the Ruby and Night. So about Rubio, the writer, he said to me that Anderson <coughs> was a great, He's a great writer, but, and he was one of the first travelers in our history uh, that also wrote about his travels. Um, he is, he's from Denmark, um, he has been in Paris, he's been in Rome, he's been in all these fantastic cities, but his favorite city was Malaga, which was not a beautiful time, a beautiful town at the time, <coughs> Industrial Revolution, 1800s. He wanted to go to Morocco because he was in love with the Arabian Nights uh, stories, the 1001 Nights. He was in love with the, those stories when he was a child. His father would read it to him. So he went to Malaga because Morocco was actually very dangerous at the time, so he didn't want to, he didn't want to, to go there. I told this in Morocco for a festival and they were laughing so much. <laughs> Imagine that <laughs> he, wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't want to go there. Um, but yeah, finding Anderson. So we had the story of one of Hans Christian Anderson in Malaga that was historically accurate. And then we could fantasize more about what would happen inside the palace in the bathhouse. But yeah, finding, finding Anderson was very difficult. If we go, go one more back, the, um, finding Anderson was very difficult. We started with a casting agency, they couldn't find anything. We had many, many people. Uh, it looked similar, but it was not him. And then we found Ken Appledorn, a very interesting actor, doing a lot of Netflix shows. At the time it's even hard to contact him now. He, he retweets and shares our post, but to talk and with him it's very difficult. So it was really nice. And he looks similar. Like, this is Hans Christian set. This is, I mean, to me it was like, it was like a present. And this guy was living in Sevilla, which is only one hour away, more or less, from Malaga. So it was, and he was speaking perfectly English because he comes from uh, America. He was uh, married with uh, someone from Australia. So he was there and he wanted to do it. So it was really, really, really nice. Then we wanted to find Sherazade. And Sherazade was yeah, a very intelligent woman. She was reading a lot of books. She was very philosophical. So it was very difficult to find a person that could become like she had to be beautiful, she had to be, she had to be a good actress, um, and also she needed to have, for our short film, something that is someone that people would recognize. Because short films, they have a very small lifespan, so you want to have some people that recognize your actors in order to, to get more doors open. To get more. So we found uh, Nuria Fergot. Uh, she is a singer, also actress, but more singer. But she is the person from Malaga. Like you say Malaga, and you say Nuria. And she wanted to do it straight away. Like she was really in love with the stories from 1001 Nights. So that story connected with her, and she said, "Okay, I will learn English to, to be the, to take the role on uh, Sherazade, which was a huge." difficult task for her in her busy career, but she wanted to do it, which was really, really nice. So we had these two, these two, these two actors, and we started filming in, I think, almost two years ago now. It was November, it was already beginning, a little bit of cold. Um, first two nights, it was the bathhouse, we could rent it off for very little money, like 20 euros, we had to pay a, a night watch to, to guard us, and they were a bit afraid that we would blow up the place or that we would change it. So we made it like a palace. We, we put curtains in, we put the red carpet in, we put fruits, tea, we put a whole art department. And for one night, it was like an Arabic palace. It was, but it was also very difficult because there were a lot of obstacles. Like it was very warm, very humid, so the camera would go. It had to be in the back all the time. People were sleeping, our producer felt really bad, like almost in the water. Mm. And if you go for two nights, it's almost traumatic. It's almost like going to, going to war. So in one moment, I saw like one wire laying in the swimming pool. And I said, oh my god, we are all being electrocuted. <laughs> but I didn't see that it was actually, it was not plugged into the electricity. Because, but you think like, what's going on? You, you cannot speak clearly after such a time. 
So, but we managed because we got a really good team and we were we were supporting each other because we also found out that we have to in order to, to make this in such a small period of time. Um, um, yeah, one of the reasons how we could find a crew was because of that story. Because people really liked the story. No one knew me at the time. Well, we had these actors that helped. But people from the first moment, they were interested in the project because of that story. About the story about telling stories. And the story about that it doesn't matter how cultures are so different from each other. Because we do share the same values. Maybe we tell them differently, but we do. We do connect. So we had a very mutual interest and we said to the camera guy, to the lighting guy, to the actors, let's make something that we could be proud of, uh, a story that would do well in festivals, and as a kind of visiting card of what we can do now, like how good are you with light at this moment of your career, show it, come to our crew, we cannot pay you, but we can, we can do something together, and that was for all levels in our film. So it was for me, definitely, it was for the actors at the time, it was for light, it was for sounds, we had very experienced people, but also people that were just coming out of school, or were just very passionate about the project. And it did flow very well together, because everybody wanted to get something out of it. So I felt it was a very responsibility that, okay, I cannot pay, I cannot even pay for good food, which was, I mean, like, I could pay for good food, but we didn't have much time to do it. We were running out of schedule, so it was really, the only responsibility I have is to make sure that this shirt can look at show everywhere where we can. So, yeah, I felt very responsible for that. Um, and then after the production, I mean, like, a lot of things went wrong. Uh, uh, like, the buff house needed to be open at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and we were running out of time, and we had it, this conversation. Okay, we can do one more shot. It will cost us only 10 more minutes. But the producer was like, ah, look, people are going to, to enter, and we need to take the curtains out. And so it was really, it was really difficult to to do. And then we had this other shot in the castle of Malaga, and we had plans on the day that there were no cruise ships coming. But then there was this storm in Gibraltar. So the cruise ship that had to go to Gibraltar continued to Malaga. And where do they want to go when they <laughs> board in Malaga? They want to see the castle. And so we had to suspect and we couldn't almost film them. We had to really look for corners that we could really take off. So then a real work started. So it was editing, sound, music. It was very strange to, to be suddenly without your crew and to finish the project with a whole new group of people, like composers, sound. But again, the story connected. Like we said, like okay, we could really make a really nice song for the credits that would tell something more about the story. So we made a song, which is now available on iTunes, just to to push a little bit the short movie that we are on different platforms. But we also have a song. Um, we have an animation, uh, which is the next sheet, uh, because we wanted to show Malaga in 1800. So but it was also very difficult. I mean, we shot it. Through the, uh, on a green screen, but in the actual uh, castle, um, and then we made we made some paintings, uh, some picture and map paintings that how Malaga would look like in the time that Emerson visited. One of the funny things is that uh, we have a very famous cathedral in Malaga, but it only has one tower. And at the time, Hans Christian Andersen was visiting Malaga, he was painting for his uh, journal in Denmark, uh, the castle. But he thought, okay, I'm gonna paint already two towers, because by the time that my post arrives in Denmark, probably this second tower has been finished. <laughs> Up to today, <laughs> the second tower has never been finished, it's still like that. But I wanted to keep it in just to show that we are looking through Hans Christian Andersen's mind. Um, in the next sheet, that is that uh, we finished quite long. We did a long time in post production. It was very hard because people want to see things, um, and you are struggling with money, with people, with buying favors. Um, and it's very difficult. Even if the story is good, you ask for time, valid time for people, like to make a song or to help finding. Uh, to make it in, in 4K already takes so much time and effort, so I was really happy, but I did feel that the story that we make, or the film that we're making, is not only a film of how we are, uh, how we want to tell the story, but it's also a film of how we are at that moment, how we look at life, how we struggle with 
problems, how we deal with uh, obstacles. So I do feel it has two sides. There's the movie that's how we were now, and it has a story for yeah, just to look for anything. So that was my presentation. Uh, yeah, we have, we have tried to do it under 10,000, but if you also count all the favors that we got, yeah, much more, much more after. Yeah. It's like you start counting all the hours that people did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, good question. Good time. Um, yes. I was wondering, you, are, uh, you made a film about Hans Christian Andersen. Is yeah. your film have, uh, has been screened in Copenhagen? Not yet. We are working now. We are uh, sent some letters to the Denmark Film Festival and in Odense. And we're still waiting for, uh, for a reply. For, for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it will be very interesting. It would be uh, nice, yes, I think so. Because yeah. Hans Christian Andersen lives in Copenhagen. Yeah. So it was, and he lived there. Yeah. So it is really nice, you know, if you could. Yeah. Do that, go there and see, see his place where he's lived in the house. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You can sell it to that museum for big bucks. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. Yeah. 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 Anyone else? And the airlines. And the airlines. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How can we, uh, I didn't get the chance to see your movie yesterday, how can I? I can't give you a link. Uh, we are working with distribution, but we want to wait a little bit more in order to, to show it more festivals. But I can give you, give you a link, yeah. Are you working on Yeah, we are working on several things. One of the things is Hans Christian Anderson visited so many places and there would be maybe something that you that we can do. That would be interesting. But the Malaga, the connection between Arabian Nights, uh, Malaga, and Hans Christiansen was so unique. I don't know if you can find it in another place like that. So. But yeah, we're working on it. So thank you so much.